we'll roll just in that, here. Got an email from somebody just now. Let me just see what he needs. Um, so please me, email me the link for the Teams meeting. Okay. I'll, ah. I'll, I'll reply. Okay. That's Andy, one of our new ones. Pretty sure I saw his email on there, but on the invite, but we'll sort that out. Okay. I just copied um, and pasted whatever you had on your email to everybody. So let me just yeah. check to be sure that he was on there. Sure. All right. Well, I will go ahead and uh, we'll yep. go ahead and open up the meeting. Um, you know, welcome back for those who are uh, continuing on from last year. Um, Bridget, welcome. Um, we get Andy on here. He'll be our other new one. Um, that gives us 13 members. We've I've sent one name forward for consideration to Monique and the team, and then that kind of leaves us still with one more um, one more position that we will need filled and we've put some feelers out um, really looking for a candidate can uh, the English second learner community so um, I have I've interviewed one that kind of fits that mold and uh, really just looking you know hopefully for another one or two and then we can have a, a better range of choice but um, at the end of the day you know we'll you know we'll do what we always do and we'll get you know the best people we can and then uh you know the work you know will really begin in earnest uh you know probably next month after this introductory meeting so um again welcome to everyone um and then uh what i'd like to do uh since we have a number of uh new folks you know some old some new um just probably the easiest thing i've got the participants up on my thing so i'll just call for uh, introductions, and then we'll we'll just go around and um, you know just a brief introduction about yourself and uh, a little bit about um, you know what you hope to accomplish here with the BAC, and then uh, you know we'll move on to the uh, the rest of the evening with the approval of our last meeting's uh, uh, minutes. So I'll go ahead and start off. Uh, Chuck Rush, uh, this year's chair. Uh, financial planner here in the local area, retired Army at you know, about 2018 after 23 years and uh, really got involved with this because of, you know, my my personal experience with, you know, public education kind of put me where I am now. And so um, this is one way I felt, you know, once I had some bandwidth outside of the military to do some stuff where um, hopefully be able to have a meaningful impact with the, the type of work we do uh, here on the team and uh, really help the school system my kids go to um, really address uh, some of the bigger problems uh, and challenges they have. And, you know, I've really enjoyed the work over the last few years um, doing that. And Bridget is one of our new members. Uh, over to you. Hi, my name is Bridget Obikoya, and I um, am a longtime Arlington resident. Uh, have one son who's in school here at Wakefield, he's 10th grade. And uh, we homeschooled until middle school. And now that I'm in the school system, I thought that um, looking at some things I'd like to see done differently, some things I'd like us to continue that we do really well. And um, when the opportunity presented itself, I thought this would be a really nice um, opportunity for me to um, get in and make my voice heard. So that's why I'm here. I am a design engineer and transportation planner with Arlington County, and I am the staff liaison to the Transportation Commission. So <laughs> you may have seen me around town, I don't know. But um, anyway, so that's what I do. I, uh, we live in Bluemont now, and we're building a house in Green Valley. So um, that's me in a nutshell. All right, well, welcome. And uh, again, thanks for stepping up and uh, joining this team. I think you'll, you know, it's a, it's a lot of fun, a lot of hard work down the line but uh it's really a good group of uh folks and we're glad to have you um jen hello everyone um so this is i lost track fourth or fifth year uh with the bac uh i have i literally ran in here from dropping kids off at sports so evenings are pretty busy for me um but i serve as uh, kind of our secretary and i uh take notes um, so I will help you all out so that you can all pay attention to the meeting. 
Um, I live, or I have two seventh graders at Swanson. And my background, I'm currently was just in between jobs when the pandemic hit. So um, on one hand, it's been great to be home and be with my family for all of this time, but I'm also a little tired of that, like I'm sure you all are. Um, <laughs> my background is really uh, in finance and operations, typically at small size startup companies. All right. Thank you, Jen. And uh, Juan, over to you. Okay. Good evening and welcome back, everyone. Um, I'm Juan Gordon. I'm a original native of Mississippi. Been flip-flopping back in between D.C. and Atlanta for the last 20 years. I had a daughter that graduated from Wakefield. Um, my real interest in the BAC is, is to strengthen uh, information going to the boat board. I'm currently a federal employee with the Department of Health and Human Services. I work in Rockville uh, with HRSA. However, we have been home for the last year and a half. I've really enjoyed it. But yes, uh, Judy, I'm getting a little tired myself. However, uh, my wife's in real estate, so I do get out quite a bit and ride around with her. That's about it. All right, well, thank you, Juan. Julie. Hello. So this is my, this will be my first full year on the back. I did a partial year last year and I'm happy to be back. Uh, I have an 11th grade daughter at Yorktown and an eighth grade daughter at Williamsburg. And they've had great experiences at APS. So I'm happy to get a chance to contribute and you know, get, learn a little bit more about how the system works uh, behind the scenes. So I am an attorney at the Securities and Exchange Commission. I focus on small businesses and advocating for them. So <clears throat> that's that's me. Okay, Michael. Good evening, and thanks for having me tonight. Uh, my name is Michael Lyons. I joined, like Julie uh, and Sal, I joined in the middle of last year as a back member. And that really stemmed from my um, personal, like you, uh, Chuck, personal experience with public education from kindergarten all the way through college, the love for education, which led me to a career um, in higher education, working with both nonprofits and for-profit companies to help uh, higher education institutions through various scholarship programs or uh, improve their student success uh, capabilities on campus. But when uh, we started having our four children, I decided to take some time and spend some time helping to raise them. And so I stepped back from work until we got the call from our uh, PTA at Abington Elementary here in Arlington that they needed some substitutes and help. So I actually started working for uh, Arlington uh, Schools uh, part-time as a substitute. And then the back openings caught my notice and somebody suggested I could be helpful there as well. So I stepped back from substitute and wanted to join back where I could hopefully bring some of my other knowledge and experience to kind of have a bigger impact on the broader school district that we love so much rather than just one classroom at a time that I was helping out with. So very excited to be here and very excited for a full year uh, to start and just want to say hello to everybody. Nice to see you all. Awesome. Nelly. Hi. Conductor for okay, there I am. Um, yeah. Hi, uh, I have a fourth grader and a second grader in um, in Arlington Public Schools, and a um, and a child in pre K. And um, we've been really um, we've been really impressed and uh, with how like rich the experience has been with Arlington Public Schools. Um, and so that you know kind of led me to want to become involved. Um, and uh, yeah, when I um, when I'm not shuttling my kids around to, you know, sports practices. Um, I work at the Department of Defense. Uh, it's really great to see some familiar faces and the new ones. I uh, look forward to working with you this year. Awesome. All right. Um, Sal said he's not in a place to uh, make introductions, so we'll let him uh, pass on this one. We'll do it next month. Um, Eric. Um, yep. Hi, hi, everyone. Eric Sullivan. Um, it's my third year on the committee now. Um, 
I have a uh, I have a senior at WNL, a sophomore at WNL, and a seventh grader at Swanson. Um, so I've been you know in the school system now for, for quite some time. Um, uh, I also, um, in addition to this and, and other things, are you know active in the PTA. Um, I coach uh, little league baseball um, still and uh, basketball in the winter. So I try and you know do as much as I can in the community. And then um, just to keep me busy, I, you know, in terms of my occupation, I work for Accenture. I'm a finance and business operations director uh, at Accenture, um, where our office is just right here in Boston. So. Um, in terms of you know my interest, it, my interest is still the same as it was when I started three years ago, which was um, to you know try and help figure out a way to um, put in, get, get in place a, a structure, a financial base for our, our uh, for success for our kids in the school district, uh, not only in the short term but obviously in the long term uh, as well. Now, things last year obviously was a little crazy, and and there was a lot of less. Two years, really, and especially last year, it's really focused on you know how do you just get through the year, um, uh, especially last year, not only in school but in everything. Um, but you know, I really would like to to uh, get back to thinking about or figuring out how long term we set ourselves up for success, sort of set our, our kids up for success uh, from a budgeting perspective. So, and for those who don't know, Eric is uh, the vice chair, so. He'll fleet up next year if he stays and get to inherit all the uh, responsibilities and the external meetings that come with the job. So um, I want to thank Eric for stepping up into that role. Um, our next newcomer, Andy. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Andy Greenwood. I have uh, been in the Arlington area. We first moved here in 2015. Uh, lived. Um, in the Penrose area for most of that time. And then uh, just moved, recently moved back, we uh, got to spend a few years in Mobile on uh, what I'll just uh, politely refer to as my Arlington appreciation tour. Um, I'm in the uh, Coast Guard and uh, we'll be retiring uh, out of the, from uh, this current assignment. Um, I have three boys, um, second, fourth, and sixth grade. Uh, the younger two are at the Montessori Public School of Arlington and the oldest just started at Gunston. Um, I uh, also, like uh, many of you have said, have a love for learning and, um, you know, feel passionately about education. It's uh, kind of one of the, I have a master's degree um, in education uh, that I got uh, over the last few years and uh, really enjoyed uh, serving on the facilities advisory committee before um, we moved away in 2019. And, um, you know, was looking for an opportunity to get involved. I uh, found out about this, and uh, I'm really glad to be a part of the uh, BAC and, and uh, what I can learn this in the next few years and help contribute. So, thanks. Andy, uh, this is Bridget speaking. Maybe we can have a side conversation. I was born and raised in Mobile, Alabama. No doubt. Yeah, we should definitely <laughs> catch up. It's changed a lot. Uh, we lived there from 2007 to 10, and uh, just going back after nine years was, was uh, a lot better. Yeah, I haven't been in a while, but anyway, okay. Nice. Yeah, let's chat. <laughs> All right. And then uh, our past chair, Melanie. Hi. Um, I, I'm sorry I'm late and I'm not on camera. I am. Um, we got caught with um, kids needing to be um, in two different places tonight. Um, so I was actually quite thrilled that this was going to be virtual. I was texting Chuck this morning um, frantically, like, is there some call in option? Um, so this is the life of two teenagers, as um, so many on this call know. Um, so thank you so much. Um, and again, I do apologize. Um, I guess this is hellos. Um, it's, uh, are, uh, what are the, are we just saying where we're from and, and why we came to the committee or, or what is, what's the information we're sharing? That's about it. Okay. So, um, I'm thrilled to be back. Um, yes, I was last year's chair. Um, so it is my, um, gosh, fourth year on back. Um, so I am, um, obviously passionate about um, our kids um, and the Arlington schools and making sure that we have a sustainable future. Um, and I know there's so much great work that's done in this committee and so much great work that's done by everyone in the school system. And I'm happy to do my little part. And I'm thrilled to be back here with all of my former back colleagues and meeting some new ones. So 
Um, hello, everyone, and um, look forward, looking forward to this year. Thank you, Melanie. And last and certainly not least, um, the lady that keeps all of this together, Leslie. Hi everyone, uh, I'm Leslie Peterson. I am the Assistant Superintendent for Finance and Management Services. Um, I will be completing my 14th year in Arlington in October, um, and I will be completing my 30th year doing budgets in schools in January. I can't even believe it. Um, a lot of you are making me feel very old because my one and only is about to turn 27 on Saturday, and she is a third grade teacher here in Arlington. So there you go. Glad to be with everyone. And I want to remind everyone, um, because we had a lot of people who came on a little bit late and some newcomers, that uh, when we do these virtual meetings, we do record all of the meetings. So just be aware that you're being recorded. Anything you say will be um, uh, it held for posterity. <laughs> Thank you. And, uh, you know, Leslie does yeoman's work um, for the impact she has. You know, she's certainly underpaid by, you know, a mile for the hours that she puts in, especially the last couple of years where we've had uh, some really challenging years in terms of balancing things and COVID and everything else. So um, she's definitely the the source of all knowledge. So anytime you guys have questions, um, you know, she is the first and authoritative source that I would ask uh, you get to go to for anything related to this budget because she knows where all the skeletons are and the history and uh, certainly helps us um, understand the long term perspective of how things got to where they are. So um, definitely important to have her perspective. Um, and, Mo I, I will say. Yeah, uh, go ahead. For, for newcomers especially, if you do have questions or you want information or any of those things, please go through Chuck to me um, rather than everybody reaching out to me. If we could just funnel Absolutely. all of that stuff through Chuck, that would I yep. would really appreciate it. Absolutely. Um, Monique O'Grady is our um, school board liaison. She may make it tonight at some point she may not um, we talked earlier today so if she comes I'll have her opportunity to introduce herself but um, the school board you know is the BAC we're really an asset for the school board and uh, she she is our liaison she will be leaving at the end of the year so um, in January we'll have a new uh, appointed liaison from the school board to us um, don't know who that will be yet, but uh, you know that you know. So we'll have kind of a, a changeover um, about midway through the year. Um, okay. Um, so uh, again, thanks for everyone uh, being here tonight. Uh, the introductions, and we'll go ahead and move on to the approval of the June minutes. Uh, those were sent out. Were there any changes or revisions that uh, anyone uh, noticed or needed uh, fixing for uh, the, our last meeting? Okay. I mean, I can't remember two days ago, so um, yeah, I think we'll be. All right, so go ahead and uh, if I can get a motion to approve. I move to approve. Second. And a second. All right, so using the reactions button, all those who vote aye, go ahead and uh, raise your hand or a thumbs up. Bridget, I saw yours up. Um, Nelly and Sal. Even I'm not just... voting. I abstain. That was a mistake. Sure. Nope. Nelly and Sal. We have uh, we have eight so far at least. Okay. Hi. Yeah, I'm a thumbs up. I for some reason I can't. Um, my <laughs> chat thumbs up. I, no I problem. <laughs> and Sal, if you just want to chat in, or I know you're remote. Mm 
We don't have him yet. Yeah. Give one moment. Okay, we'll just carry him as non-voting. Um, I know he's kind of in a spot right now where it may be difficult to answer. So um, looks like the motion carries. Um, so the minutes are so approved, we'll get those published. Okay, um, public comment. Um, so uh, for those who are new, um, Josh Fold is, um, he, he represents the Arlington Education Association. He is, um, also a teacher in the system, but he, he is a normally our uh, our public comment. You know, he's usually here each each of the meetings. He uh, sent me an email, so I'm just going to go ahead and read it verbatim uh, for the meeting. Uh, just you know, for his comments um, that the AEA supports the employee vaccine mandate in addition to the lives that will be saved. A not small amount of money will be saved by the APS health insurance plans. AEA is asked that the annual cost of living adjustment be tied to the Social Security annual increase. Many agreed in the past, especially when that number was in the 1% to 2% range. Reports are indicating that the Social Security COLA will likely exceed 6% this year. We hope that support continues so our hardworking employees do not lose ground as prices in the area increase. And those are uh, the comments from Josh that have come in uh, via email. He's in the ACTC meeting tonight, so could not join us. OK, um, so with that, uh, that ends any other public comment. I didn't see any other folks that joined other than the usual. Cast of members. OK. Um, all right, uh, I just asked Leslie to just um, a verbal, I didn't want anything really prepared, but just like, you know, what's, you know, since we last met in June, you know, what's sort of transpired, transpired over the, over the summer, just so that, um, you know, we have some sense since we've been out of this, uh, you know, the normal routine, just, you know, what, what has gone on and, you know, give us an idea of kind of where things are, are heading. Oh, well, uh, with summer, you know, most of the time it's, uh, it's kind of quiet. This summer, not so much, but um, typically there's not a lot of stuff that happens on budget during the summertime. Um, I will say that um, we have been working with um, schools to ensure that they have the appropriate staffing that they need. And um, that that's been rough because we have so many vacancies right now, uh, mostly in special education. Um, we also uh, have started on uh, the school board's budget direction for next year. And so we're looking at where the school board wants to focus their priorities for budget for FY23. Um, we're also looking now at where what obviously we, we have our three year forecast in the budget document, which will be coming shortly um that shows that you know next year is going to be rough because we used 40 million dollars in one-time funds to balance our budget for fy22 so that puts us automatically in a hole so um trying to figure out how we're going to mitigate that um for fy23 is going to be interesting um but you know we're already starting to work on that um we hope to have uh, numbers from the county for FY23 for their first sort of take uh, at what revenue is going to look like for FY23 uh, sometime in October, usually mid, mid to late October. So we'll see if they have that. Um, it's the, for those of you who are new, um, the state budget is done every two years, even though they meet every year. There's actually a biennial budget. Um, this year, FY23 will be the first year of a new biennium. So it puts us kind of in a disadvantage knowing what the state revenue is going to be for FY23. We won't really have any good idea about that until the governor proposes his budget in mid-December. 
So there's some milestones along the way that we're, we're looking forward to, um, but we've already started working and talking about FY23 because we know that we've got, we've got some major work to do for that. Um, and whatever information I get, I will try to pass along to you um, as soon as possible. Chuck, you're on mute. Any, any questions for Leslie? Um, normally for uh, the folks that are new, we'll have something probably more formal, but um, you know, with the introductory meeting, you know, just to get a sense of where we're going and then, you know, beginning in October, there'll probably be some things that will be more formally structured from Leslie that'll help kind of identify where things are headed. So um, just so you know. Okay, um, thank you, Leslie. Um, moving on to our next agenda item then um, would have been, Hold on one sec. I think Andy has his hand up. Andy, do you have a question? Or was that from before? Oh, it's that's from before, before. sorry. <laughs> Just want to be sure. Um, next spot would have been for Monique. She apologizes for not being able to be here. Um, if she does show up, I'll give her the floor um, you know, toward the end uh, so she can introduce herself. Um, she's been at this a long time on the school board for those who are new. Um, so again, she's another one of these, um, you know, the institutional memory that uh, we, we do rely on to help us understand kind of where where things have been and, you know, what things have been tried and just to get a sense of how Arlington has evolved over time as, as a system. Um, so the next item I wanted to talk about was uh, committee liaisons. And so we have, um, you know, different committees, you know, like the JFAC, the FAC, ACTC, et cetera, where, um, you know, we have at times had um, individual members who will attend those meetings just to get a sense of what other committees are talking about and, you know, providing that information back to us, which can be helpful, particularly in the areas where, um, it, it, as you know, you know, this budget, there's only so many dials that can be um, turned really when when we start talking about um, savings and cuts and things of that nature. And so having um, BAC members who who understand some of the other uh, larger uh, components of the budget and those committees that support that um, can be helpful for us as we really once we get the budget delivery at the end of February and we begin our work in March, having an understanding of where other committees are in terms of um, how they're trying to ap approach the the overall budget uh, from their viewpoint can be helpful for our work so um there's uh, a number of you know as, as we look at, across the different advisory boards um you know the fac is one that's definitely important um ccpta we've always had uh representation on our, our one of our past chairs um bob ramsey who um fleeted out after six years uh normally was sitting on that um, and he's no longer with us, obviously. Um, the JFAC and ACTL, are, which is which used to be the um, teaching and learning one, I think they've just rebranded the name of it. But um, those seem to be the big ones where um, there, you know, a healthy amount of you know budgetary impacts. And so just opening it up to individuals among the team, or if there are any of those um, committees that you would like to um, participate in, just to give. Uh, us feedback on you know their deliberations and, and the types of things that they're wrestling with um you know if if you're interested in doing that just uh let me know um via email um you know or if there's one you're already doing and i didn't make mention of it again just let me know and then we can make sure that um as you have those meetings if there's anything that is significant for the group to know then um you know we can share that amongst the team so that we have a, a read on uh, what types of things are going on, particularly on the budget side um, for those different committees? Um, any any questions about that? OK, then we'll move on to our next item. Which. Um, I'm going to try to share my screen here, so I'm going to bring up the uh, proposed schedule, so bear with me as I try to do this. All right, um, hopefully everyone can see the uh, screen. Um, is that is that showing up or not? Yep, 
can see it. Yes. yes. Okay. Yes. Okay, great. Thank you. So normally we will meet on the second Wednesday of each month, um, you know, from seven to nine. Um, in years past, obviously that was in person over at the SciFax building. Um, while the state of emergency is still going on, you know, we, you know, virtual is an option, but at some point that may end, but we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. Um, as you look at the different calendar dates here, we do have a couple where there are some off cycle meetings and I'll just highlight those. Um, next month, you know, we'll intend to meet on October 20th. Um, that's to support Leslie, who uh, may have a conference that she um, would like to attend, which obviously for her own professional development and you know, the, the budget piece is important to her. So um, we'll intend to meet on the 20th. And then um, given what we know about March and the level of work that we'll need to do, um, to provide our advice around the report that we'll develop on the proposed budget. Um, I've set aside three different meetings in March. Obviously, if three are not required, then we'll, you know, we'll make decisions on which ones we drop off. Um, but the second, ninth, and 16th um, are proposed at this time in the event we need three meetings to get through, you know, whatever the budget makeup is going to be come February. You know, if we're starting off with a big hole, um, you know, we're likely to go back into some of the tiered cuts and assessing those. So um, it may be necessary, but if it isn't, then, you know, obviously we'll we'll scale it back to two. But I don't think less than two would be helpful, just given the volume of work that we normally do around that time frame. Um, April 6th will be off cycle because the following Wednesday is the uh, spring break. So we'll meet on the 6th and then the 11th of May will be our um, really that's our last meeting to really define not define but to approve um, the major pieces of our report and then June 8th would be our, our final meeting for this term. Uh, so any any questions about that before we move on? OK, and I'll make sure that uh, Claudia, who uh, wrangles the school board, make sure she has a schedule as well so that, uh, you know, we're we're all aware of uh, the goings on. Um, and Chuck, I was just going to say that uh, now that we've gotten the OK for the virtual meetings, I will send out the invitations for um, at least the meetings through December. Um, and maybe even through the end of the year, just so that everybody has them on their calendar um, in the next few days, maybe not tomorrow or Friday, sure. as soon as I can. Okay. Eric, you had a question? Yeah, is the expectation that we're this will be now for the full year? Did we get approval to do virtual for the full year or was it just kind of temporary or? I read it as temporary while we still are under this kind of state of emergency. Um, once I think we're back into that place like we were, I think in the in the late spring where everything was was real good, um, we may not be able to actually meet virtually. I think we will still have a, a virtual. I don't know if we're going to be able to have a virtual component or not. I mean, I have to check that. But for the foreseeable future, we will be meeting virtually. Yeah, okay. and I know that that our committee last year requested this virtual. We we had such great attendance and I think everybody really appreciated the, the virtual attendance. Um, and I know that a lot of other committees were also expressing the same thing that they wanted to continue to meet virtually. Um, that I don't believe is in the code right now, but there's been a lot of pressure on uh, the board to to allow committees to meet virtually. So we'll see. Okay. And next week, um, Dr. Cannon is meeting with all of the advisory board chairs and the general counsel will give us a little bit um, more in depth view on this format and you know the rules of the road, which you know the rules really haven't changed. Um, you know, we you know 
basically, you know, the same format that we did as last year with recording it and um, making sure, you know, we still have all the required notices uh, to the public for our meetings. But the um, the key thing will just be, um, you know, getting the general counsel's view a little bit more detail next week. And if there's anything significant that comes out of that that may affect whether we do virtual or um, in person or, you know, some kind of hybrid option. Um, my understanding on the hybrid would be if if the state of emergency ends, we would have to have a physical quorum, but then above and beyond the physical quorum, we could still have folks dialing in uh, virtually, but in person, we would have to have enough members to um, conduct that meeting uh, per the rules. So um, I think next week we'll, we'll get a little bit more information from uh, the school board chair and the GC on how that's how that will play out. But um, I don't I don't expect it really to impact, at least in the short term, the work we're doing while Delta is the Delta variant is still, you know, even though we're not nearly as bad as other areas, it's still, you know, obviously a concern. Okay. Um, any any other questions about the schedule? Okay. Um, so uh, for the new members, Eric, uh, over the past year or so, has uh, kept kept a an eye on the different policies that APS requests input to, and so. Um, you know, turn the floor over to Eric to talk about uh, some of that work. And then uh, there's some things that are coming up uh, sort of in the last quarter of the year that will um, potentially have some impacts to the, you know, there, there are probably things that we're going to need to provide impact to our input to that, uh, that, th that this committee has some, some degree of responsibility for. So go ahead and turn it over to Eric and, uh, let him explain kind of what he's seeing and uh, what may be required of us. Um, sure. So, but let me let me take a step back just to uh, talk about the, the policy cycle uh, for some of our newer folks. Um, there, there are always policies being reviewed in our in our uh, board meetings. In the board meetings, um, they're on a schedule. That schedule is released and published on the APS site. Um, uh, it actually, they the policy review team. Um, updates that quarterly and and often in between that, but certainly quarterly. They haven't updated yet for this school year, so the last update was last May. So if you look at this site, it's uh, on the APS site under engage um, on the engage part. Um, you'll see the long list of policies that are up for discussion for the year. Um, what they do is um, they will uh, there there are different points of time where you can where individuals, any, anyone can provide input or will have the opportunity as a committee to provide input uh, through the cycle. So about six months ahead of time, they'll open it up for just general comments on the policy uh, language as it exists today, and they'll collect information, <clears throat> excuse me, collect input, and they'll use that um, uh, as they are starting to craft any changes they want to make to policy. So that's the first one. Um, as they um, draft policies, they'll they'll put out an initial draft, and again they'll look for um, feedback from the community, and that's the second opportunity. Uh, once they have the draft ready um, and finalized, they'll once again send it out or issue um, a, a request for feedback to the community. Um, and again, in, as individuals, we can com all communicate, uh, provide input uh, any time in any policy. Um, but we again, we have the opportunity as a committee to provide uh, input uh, on top of that. And then there's the final review just prior to the uh, to the action at the board meeting where there's yet another window that up, opens up. So those are the four windows that open up for every policy that's on the on the board. So if you look at the schedule, you'll see um, uh, when they revise it, you'll see policies that are review up for review or discussion at the board meeting. In November and December, January, for all through the whole school year, and actually through next summer already. Um, and again, six months ahead of time, they'll start opening them up for comment, public comment, and then there'll be periods of time when when um, we when we can all contribute um, some input. Um, so as a board, a lot of those policies um, 
um, obviously as individuals, anyone should be, everyone should be looking at, I would encourage everyone to look at and, and contribute to. Some of them are relevant to uh, the work we do and, and some aren't. So um, for example, the no tobacco policy, probably not something that we need to contribute to as a, a budget advisor committee, uh, but there are certainly policies related to financial management that we will want to. So what I do is I tend, I try and keep an eye out for what's coming and let everyone know what's coming up in the uh, in the in the uh, cycle. Um, the um, um, a couple of things um, looking forward here, um, and again the, the 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 schedule hasn't been revised, so I don't know what has changed or what's been pushed out, um, uh, or what has brought been brought in. Uh, so I'm going off the schedule that's still from last spring. Uh, there's a couple of things coming up uh, again just for individual comment I don't think we'd want to comment on as, as, a, as a BAC, uh, but things like the Community Activities Fund, uh, commercial activities funding, um, things like that are coming up in the next next month's uh, meeting. If you have an interest in those, if that's something that you want to contribute to, we encourage you to do that as an individual, but as, as a committee, again, that's not something we will uh, probably be contributing to this this time around. The things that are more impactful or where we probably need to really um, dig in and provide some feedback are the ones that are, are tied to our financial management policies. Uh, and coming up starting actually in November, in November, December, January, and February, there's a series of policies that are currently on the schedule that we will want to at least review and we may decide as a group to provide uh, input to. Um, so for example, in November, um, there's uh, the policies are, uh, around financial construction site acquisitions, uh, capital improvement planning. Those are in, on the November docket right now. Um, December, just looking at the list here real quick. Uh, December, um, uh, jointly funded projects. So, you know, jointly funded things that we do with the county is on that list. Budget savings policies, uh, the budget direction policy. So, a number of policies for the January meeting. That we would definitely want to contribute to, I think. Uh, and then coming into February, there's revenue sharing and, and county revenue. So um, I want to just give everyone a heads up there that um, you know we there's nothing to do for this meeting today, but coming starting the next meeting, we will have some policies that we may want to at least talk about for a few minutes, or may spend a little more time and dig into uh, as a group and figure out how we want to contribute as a uh, as a committee. Any questions for Eric? Okay, um, seeing none. Um, so the last um, item, and then if Monique um, joins us prior to uh, the conclusion, uh, we'll give her the floor, let her talk about her perspective from the, the school board, what's going on, and um, allow her an opportunity to introduce herself. Um, the the last piece is um, what we want to just have was a, a guided discussion about um, the the work ahead, um, the types of uh, things that we ask to, you know, either have you know experts or assistant you know teams within the school system that will come and talk to us about their different areas, uh, particularly as it relates to the budget. Um, so just to kind of step back and take the thousand you know thirty thousand foot view so between now and february is really the opportunity for us as a as a group to get as smart as we can on um the development of the budget the budget direction um different areas within the school system where we know that there may be change or there's something significant going on within uh some of those departments where it would be helpful to have um, some of those responsible for the operations of that part of the school system come and talk to us about um, what they're doing, what kind of issues they see, and an opportunity to have a dialogue with them and ask questions and just you know get a better um, understanding of how um, those departments influence the budget and, and where there may be opportunities or not in, in terms of um, you know, if there's reductions required, like, you know, what kind of things would we not want to think about or what things may there be opportunities for efficiencies, things of that nature. Um, 
so that's sort of the September to about the February time frame. And then, you know, come the end of February, the superintendent will formally present the budget to his proposed budget to the school board. And really, that's when our our work begins in earnest with some presentations about the budget and understanding what is in it. And for the new members, um, it's always recommended that the executive summary portion of the budget is where you you really focus your reading. Um, you know, 400 page document, but about the first 100 to 120 pages are where all the information really is that that is relevant to what we're doing. Um, but we'll spend then a few meetings in March, April and May formulating our report to the school board about the budget how we think it links or not to the budget direction as well as you know in it's kind of dependent each year um helping them understand the impacts of different cuts what kind of trade-offs could be made or not um again whatever is required given the makeup of that budget at the time and this you know being my fourth year we've had every budget has been different because the you know either the deficit has been different or we had COVID. So it just kind of depends on what is, you know, sort of the state of play in the county, state, nationally at that time. So it's hard to say that one year is going to look like um, any other. In this case, you know, we're coming out of hopefully the pandemic and that hopefully we'll see some things that may improve, particularly revenue, things like that. But really that you know that four to five meetings beginning in March is our our go time as a group to really dive into the budget, understand it, and formulate the best advice we can as a group to the school board about the makeup of the budget and where we may you know have some opinions about um, what things could be done to either balance it or different investments or disinvestments, et cetera. And then really, um, you know, June is you know, our final report where we just do an overall report for the year. And what that does is really that that kind of sets the table one to provide input to the budget direction for the upcoming year, but also as a closeout report of the work that we've done and um, helping us, you know, as a group state to the public and to the board, you know, what, what we've seen and, um, you know, what our advice has been and what we would recommend going forward. And so, um, that that's really kind of the life cycle of a year on this committee. That said, um, in the past, as an example, and I'm just throw a few things out here, and then what I'd like to do is open the floor to discussion. You know, some of the things that we've had um, experts within the system come in and talk to us about might be um, the demographic projections, for example, like how how does the how does APS project enrollment and how does that influence the budget and sort of what's the, the the science and the art that goes into that to help inform what we do uh, from a budget in terms of making sure that we have enough resources for what we project may be our enrollment, you know, maybe up to 10 years out. Um, you know, we've had, you know, folks come in and talk about the new equity policies and what does that mean for um, are there different ways that we're going to approach funding the school based on an equity model versus um, something more maybe along planning factors? Um, obviously, facilities and the CIP is a is a big component because we spend a lot of capital on that. Um, tech, teaching and learning. Um, there's always variations of compensation studies that have rolled around that obviously greatly influence the budget since that's our biggest expense. Um, and then, you know, some of the other things that have happened over the years, like transportation studies and things of that nature, where, you know, trying to get an understanding of are there ways that things can be improved or made more efficient to where some of those areas aren't as costly to APS as they as they have been. Uh, so those are just some some examples of things that in the past we've had um, APS um directors and and folks of that nature come and talk to us about and so what i'd like to do is open up the floor um just for you know you know to hear your thoughts about the types of things you're aware of or the types of things maybe you're you have a gap in understanding of that would be helpful as we build really the october to february calendar what might be some things that the group would be interested in in 
getting more information about as we as we move ahead uh, for the upcoming year. And Eric, go ahead. So the um, I, I know we've had. Um, I'm not sure what the status is on our, the compensation study. I know we, we we've done some work on the compensation study, but I, um, you know, given um, so much of our budget is tied to compensation, um, I think any any input we can get or any information we can get on, you know, what's going on with the compensation study um, would be helpful. Um, I, I think we find that without looking at that long term, we're never if we don't figure that one out long term, we're not going to um, come up with a good answer. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. Um, yeah. The uh, school board is having a work session on the compensation study on December 7. It's kind of late in the process, but there's work that needs to be done between now and then that the consultant will be working on. Um, sadly, our assistant superintendent of human resources is retiring next week. Um, so he needs to continue to lead that process. I don't know um, exactly who's going to take that over, um, but it's proceeding. The work is being done by the consultant, and so we will have um, some things to talk about after the December 7 work session. Okay. So you would recommend, Leslie, that we have that work session in December and then maybe that's a, a good January agenda item for the back. Would that be the right timing or before and after? What would you recommend? Yeah, I think um, uh, when is our meeting in, in December, isn't it? Um, it is right after the compensation work session, so we could definitely have a big discussion in December okay. about okay. the session. Okay. Um, Andy, you had a comment about equity initiatives. If you'd like to expound sure. on that. Um, yeah, I typed it in the chat because I wasn't sure which would be the best way. But um, sure. yeah, I mean, we you've talked about a lot of things that have changed and are and are affecting the process. And uh, one thing I, I, I would like to know more about is what these equity initiatives are that the county is, or the, the system is, is um, pursuing and how we can, you know, um, use that to formulate our budget. Yeah, if, uh, as a friend of mine said to me in, at work today, that uh, if you want to know what an organization's priorities are, show, show me their budget. Right. <laughs> so if this is, you know, how is this all tied together? Okay. And, um, one move that we know is afoot, I don't know how fully formed it is, but Reed Goldstein is one of the uh, five board members, and he's been working on an alternative funding model for, um, you know, as part of this larger study that is sort of in the nonprofit world, but um, he's he's trying to develop some sort of alternative funding model that um, may work hand in glove with the planning factor model we currently use now, and so maybe a hybrid of the two. Um, but I, I think certainly it would be appropriate. Um, I'm not sure where he's at in this process, but to reach out to Reed and ask him, you know, to come back. He he made a presentation last year just as a very high level view of what this model might be. Um, but certainly he's I would assume that he has progressed above and beyond where he discussed it with us um, you know, a few months ago. And that would be a, I think a good one, as well as our our um the superintendent's uh, director that's running the equity programs to talk to us about, you know, okay, concept, concept's great, but how, how does this, uh, how's this operationally within within the system? So definitely um, a topic that's been important the last couple of years. So definitely make sure we can rope that up. Leslie? Yeah, I don't know where Reed is on that either. I know that he's working on it. Uh, he's working with the ERS organization as well looking at how to put that together. Um, I haven't had any conversations with him really in the last couple of months about it. So I don't know if it's going to be ready for the FY23 budget or if he's going to need the time mm -hmm. uh, 
this year to work it through and then have it ready for the FY24 budget. I, I just don't know. Yeah. And I'll, um, I'll reach out to Monique and um, get a sense from her if that's, um, you know, when, when that might be an appropriate time to bring in. Um, Michael. Yeah, thank you, Chuck. Uh, so I had three things I want to touch on, and I, I'll try to make it quick since I know others probably want to speak and get kind of late. Uh, I wanted to, uh, I think this is an appropriate time to talk about. Um, one of the things I would love to learn more about, especially in the early part of the year, is how we're starting to determine enrollment forecasts moving forward, given the experience we had this past year and how that was a big topic uh, uh, going into this new school year where we weren't sure who was going to remain in APS, who was trying to find other alternatives, and just kind of wondering if we get some more enlightenment on that as early on as possible this time around. I know that's a moving target, and it's kind of hard to mm -hmm. do that, but I know I'd appreciate that information, or at least how we're going about getting that information. Okay, and then you said you had two others? Yeah, so I was looking at the uh, end of the year report from back last year, so I wanted to know a couple other things that I just want to keep in mind. Uh, and I'm not sure where they should fall in regards to our calendar, but one of the things that we had talked about was uh, a uh, study of how the APS responded to the past year. I don't know if there was ever any discussion about whether that study would ever get done or whether there was something responsible for it. But I think it's something that we should bring up again, especially early on in the school year, simply to kind of understand where we can learn from possible missteps. I don't want to call them mistakes. I don't think anyone was intentionally uh, don't do anything wrong, but just somewhere where we can look back to past year and learn from it. I think the earlier we do that, the better, or at least put that idea in front of somebody who may see the value in it. And then the last piece is just um, who do we talk to to kind of understand where some of our recommendations from years past, including in these reports and everything, um, where those are being considered still today, whether they've fallen off because of other priorities or whether they're being worked on. I think that's one of the things that we always talk about, but I just don't know who to bring in from the outside, uh, whether that be board members, individual board members, all the board members, or staff, or uh, Leslie, if you have some expertise in this, just setting some time aside to talk about where these recommendations we made year in, year out, what's being done about them, is there anything being done about them, why or why not? I think that's just this important thing, again, early on, get out ahead of that, rather than kind of at the end of the year, recommending the same things because we had the same experiences. So that's all kind of tied together, and I don't quite have the answer about who we should talk to or anything, but that's something I want to put on everybody's radar. Okay. Um, Jen. Uh, yeah, I was also going to mention the enrollment stuff, so um, I won't comment on that. Uh, and then the other one was just in uh, thinking ahead about the virtual learning program that is the that we're doing this year and kind of how that plays out um, with some of the challenges that have that it's been having. Um, how long is that something we're going to have to think about and budget for in future years? Realize that's an unknown at this point, or maybe it's an unknown at this point, but just maybe make sure that is on our radar. Probably not now, probably much later in the winter. And I know she's not here, but um, uh, Catherine Christensen, toward the end of the year last year, and another email service, but um, you know, really like you know the use of our technology and um, you know how it can be leveraged to generate savings and efficiencies, and um, you know just sort of the the IT way ahead for APS, especially, you know, the the significant amount of investments we made in the last year because of the virtual learning model. Um, but how does that, does that have the ability to translate into savings that we could capture and use um, either to redirect those into other programs or, you know, we, it, it just allows us some general degree of savings within the budget. So I know that that was an offshoot of that, uh, that comment, Jen. So yeah, definitely the the virtual learning program and then our you know sort of our systems IT architecture is you know as we continue to embrace it you know how how is that helping us as a system um one I think I'd seen your hand pop up briefly um did you have uh something from your your perch 
Uh, yes, I wanted to quickly, um, you had asked about information that may be uh, viable and helpful to us during the year. I think information on the capital improvement plan um, may be of assistance to us. And also, Leslie mentioned that we had a $40 million um, deficit going in. In looking at that 40 million, is there are, in the, are there any projected plans of school consolidation as far as classrooms again, or any major cut in a program that may be, you know, something that's on the table that we are to consider this year? Okay. Let's see, and then the projected deficit, you know, and kind of early early discussion about what that may mean and you know the the ways in which we might have to address it is that a fair restatement Juan? Uh, yes okay um jen did you have something else um i see your hand up nope sorry okay um other members um, that you know, particularly those who've been here a couple couple times. Um, any any other topics? Uh, just kind of based on what you see, where um, helping us build out our calendar and areas to get smart on. Um, any other items that would be worthy of consideration? Eric, go ahead. Um, you know, transportation is always a good one. I mean, that, that's always you know a a um, an area that comes up for discussion. We spend a lot of money on transportation. Uh, we're a growing community. Things are just getting busier. Um, yeah. It's always good to kind of, I think, feed that in somewhere so we can, you know, use whatever we can get to, you know, towards the end of the year. Okay. Um, any any other items? Melanie, anything from you? <laughs> Sorry, thank you. I was coming off mute there. Um, I yep. had on my list um, definitely the enrollment um, issue, so so thanks for hitting on that. I also had on my list Juan um, hit on it with just the size of the deficit coming up. It's just talking about some early strategies. If there's anything larger that needs to be discussed, we've talked about this before, is trying to get some of those larger issues out early so that um, the community has a chance to mull over them in advance about what is palatable and what is not palatable. Um, you know, we've had this discussion with Leslie and, and I see Monique there. Hi, Monique. Um, so um, discussing these things, I think, um, will be really important. Um, and also trying to get as many ideas from the community as possible. I think that was a great idea last year is, is sourcing ideas from the other um, committee. So hopefully we build that into our fall schedule as well, um, because I think it was good to do a little crowdsourcing because people start to think about what is it going to take and and where are our um, uh, where's everyone's respective tolerance and limits. Um, and I think that um, building that into the fall schedule would be great too. Okay. Um, if if you haven't provided input, I know we have some folks that didn't attend tonight. So, you know, we'll, you know, I'll make, you know, another call for other input for um, things where we want to get smart on or, you know, start, you know, some early discussions or study on it. Um, I'll, I'll, you know, here in the next couple of days, I'll put that out again. And what we'll do is we'll start to uh, build out um, as logically as we can. Uh, some of these ideas into um, our agendas moving forward, and then we can, um, you know, certainly if some expected, you know, we can always uh, adjust our schedules. But just wanted to, uh, you know, solicit those ideas from from the team, and uh, you know, obviously, you know, we'll work with Leslie um, to set the table for those, so that we have uh, some really good discussions going into uh, February. Um, all right, so it looks like Monique, our school board liaison, has joined us, so I'll allow her an opportunity to um, introduce herself, but also um, just the perspective of the school board and, uh, you know, kind of what she's seeing and, uh, you know, some perspective, especially for our new members about uh, the type of work we do and how the school board uses us as a, as a resource, um, among other resources and voices to uh, shape the, the budget going forward. So, Monique, over to you. 
Thanks so much, Chuck. Hi, everybody. Hello, and um, thank you for serving again for those folks who are returning, and thank you to our new members. Um, this committee is a very important committee. It does help us um, determine how to move forward when it comes to how we're going to handle our budget situation. And I'm sorry that I missed the earlier part of the meeting. I was attending a town hall and, and couldn't attend from the beginning of your meeting. So um, I do appreciate hearing um, the conversation from our back members um, and have I have enjoyed being the liaison um, to this committee. Um, I, it is important for you guys to um, ponder some of the tough choices we're gonna have to make. Last year, we, we had an incredibly tough year in that we thought we were going to have not only issues with the, um, the fiscal uh, budget that we're in currently, but we also thought we were going to have to take a look at rejiggering last year's um, budget that we were actually in. Uh, and so um, the back was very helpful in, in coming up with ideas for how we might address what we perceived was um, a shortfall for the um, the fiscal year we were in. Uh, fortunately, because of federal support, we did not have to um, take any of those recommendations. Uh, we were able to fortunately um, get to a balanced budget last year with additional federal dollars that were on the table to support um, schools around COVID. We do not know that we're gonna have that sort of support this year. Uh, and so um, I, I heard um, Chuck say that Leslie mentioned that we're going in this year. Is this true uh, with a $40 million deficit? If that is the case, um, it is clear that we are going to be in a situation where we're going to have to look at um, some creative uh, budgeting. So the BACS role will be even more important. One of the things I've appreciated in the last two years in the back is that we've actually had the opportunity to hear from um, folks in, um, in, in staff um, about issues that you guys think may need a tougher look when it comes to budgeting. And, and we, we did do that last year in particular. Um, and I'm looking forward to you guys doing that again this year so that when we come to the superintendent's proposed budget, you already have some ideas in place and you've already done your homework on why it is you think um, changes should be made. I think the next thing you're going to want to look at is the school board's budget direction, which will be coming forward soon. Um, and you will see where the school board um, is interested in looking at um, uh, the budget. Um, I think one of the things that you're going to see there is collective bargaining. And that may, in fact, um, create some um, additional cost. So um, that's just one area. I will let you guys um, uh, understand what the, the school board is putting forward when it actually comes forward. But um, there are going to be, I think, uh, if that does come forward, um, and that is, I believe, the intention of our board um, to um, look at collective bargaining, uh, that will be another area that will, will push the budget. Um, I do understand um, that we are already looking at ways that, um, and, and scrubbing to see um, if there are other ways that we need to um, be moving forward as a system that can save money. So staff is already looking at that. Um, so I don't think you will be alone in this endeavor. Um, and so uh, this is a, such an important aspect of what we do in our community, and it's going to be increasingly important. Uh, so I want to thank you for your hard work, and I look forward to attending your meetings this year. Any questions for Monique? Okay, um, Monique, thank you. And uh, as always, you know, we, we appreciate your insights. I know um, there's times where you can't speak for the board, but you certainly give us an insight into, uh, you know, what's going on. And I think just help us um, understand, you know, I think a bit more of the county perspective that is this vital uh, for us to to consider uh, as we as we do our work forward. Um, and then so you, you'll be with us until the end of the year and then come January, we'll have a new liaison. Is that correct? That is correct, because I will complete my term at the end of the year. So you will have another person uh, from the board who will be acting as your liaison at that point. Okay, thank you. You need to determine who that is. Yep. Okay. Um, you know, one other item that I, I found helpful early on in this process was um, just an understanding of 
you know, the, the sources of funding for um, our budget. And there's, um, you know, a number of different ways in which we receive money, uh, either from the federal government, the state, um, you think about Medicaid, the SNAP program, um, grants, there's, you know, th there's a number of different pots of money that we receive that help fund our school budget. Obviously, local tax revenue is the most significant portion of that. Um, but I think it's it, it's helpful, I think, each year to understand from that viewpoint um, the different sources of funding and just understanding how, you know, particularly at the county level, with the revenue sharing agreements that we have with Arlington County, how that works, which types of revenues do we share, which ones we don't, um, and having, I think, just a common understanding of just how the budget is funded as a, as a first principle uh, is something that is always important for us to consider because sometimes it, it, it helps us understand where there's risk, you know, particularly with revenue, um, because we, we share in gains, but that means we also share in the losses at times if revenue falls short, you know, based on our proportion that we get out of the county, but also the different, you know, it's just helpful, I think, to understand that as a, as a, as a baseline. So, um, you know, we'll certainly put that into the, the program as far as our agenda moving forward, because, um, while I, it's not complex, it, it's just helpful to have an understanding of how Arlington County and the school system work together, particularly on budget matters, and get a feel for how that's approached because it'll be helpful as the county begins to make its projections for revenue, what impacts that has. Um, depending on the type of revenue it may be, whether it's um, you know, our property tax assessments, commercial real estate assessments, um, and, and the other sources of, of revenue that the county receives that uh, do flow into our budget. So um, that would probably be the one I would say that, you know, we'd also want to consider is just, you know, ensuring that we all have a level understanding of, of how we're funded. Um, any, any other items uh, from the group as far as uh, discussion points? Um, I'd ask, you know, in the next week and, you know, again, I'll put an email out um, to those who uh, weren't able to join us tonight, um, you know, final input by about a week from now, and then, you know, we can take a look at that overlay of topics and then begin to program that out into a schedule and then line up um, the different experts we need to have come in and talk to us, whether they're APS, consultant, you know, whoever whoever is best positioned to inform us as a, as a team, uh, how those areas work and be able to give us, you know, the best understanding possible. Um, before we move to adjourn, are there any, um, any questions about any of the uh, items we've covered tonight? Um, you know, we do have some housekeeping items. Um, the contact roster, as far as phone numbers and emails, um, if you could uh, funnel those to me, um, Jen, I believe, graciously offered to help me with that. Um, so if you just put the two of us on that email, we can um, get our roster updated and back to uh, the, the school board team. And then um, biographies, especially for uh, those who are new. Um, and if you're you know, a legacy member, if you have uh, changes to your biographies, if you, uh, again, about a week from now, if you could have that input to me, then we can get that cleaned up and then posted to um, our site on the uh, the APS system. All right, I see no more questions, um, so this will be a rarity. Um, give you back some time tonight, and uh, is there a motion to adjourn? I move to adjourn. And seconded. All, all those in favor? I'm in favor. <laughs> I think we're good. I think we're good on the votes. Okay. Um, 
I appreciate everyone's uh, time and flexibility. I know we had, um, you know, last 24, you have a few changes, but um, I, I do agree that um, the first year being physically in person and last year where we were virtual because of the pandemic, um, the level of participation and discussion and input was was markedly different between those two years. And not that one year was bad, worse, or anything like that, but I just think ha the technology giving us the flexibility to meet um, under a range of circumstances where you know being in, being in person isn't possible. Um, you know, as long as I think we can stay within the the guidelines of the state but um enabling if we go to a hybrid model if that's the way that this goes but um you know this has been i think a helpful um tool for us that has given us a lot better input i think particularly last year as we wrestled with some pretty heady heady topics with the pandemic and how we were trying to address it so having um you know, more voices with different perspectives, uh, I think made last year, um, uh, you know, a really good product in terms of what we tried to deliver. Um, I have all the input, um, you know, Eric and I'll, you know, find some time to, you know, sketch out a strategy. And then obviously Leslie will will start up, um, you know, some pre-meetings to, you know, where we can start working together to set the agenda. And then we'll, uh, we'll take things from there. Uh, Melanie, your hand's still up question or no but just having trouble bringing it down okay <laughs> all right uh with that we will go ahead and adjourn for the evening i give you back 40 minutes of your night and uh we again a reminder because we will be off cycle next month october 20th um i know depending on other events that may pose some challenges but october 20th will be our next um our next scheduled meeting and i'll see you all then thank you Thanks, Chuck. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Thank you. Thanks. Good night.